Hello, my name is Małgorzata Gasta, and it is a great honor to present you my graduate work at this Virtual Walter Fitch Award Symposium. I would like to thank you, the organizers and audience for your interest, and I hope you will be fascinated with a story of the genetic mechanism for sexual dichromatism in birds. This project, a part of my PhD at CBO University of Porto, Portugal, was recently published in Science, and it is my pleasure to walk you through this discovery. There are a few phenomena in the natural world that have evoked so much attention and discussion among both scientists and public as the difference in appearance between males and females. Generations of evolutionary biologists, ever since Darwin, have attempted to find evolutionary explanation of this phenomenon. Until today, even with the growing number of studies, we still have a poor understanding of many aspects of sexual dimorphism, especially regarding the underlying molecular basis. Birds are one of the most diverse and conspicuous colored group of animals. Many species display striking difference in male and female coloration, a condition known as sexual dichromatism. The difference can be so dramatic that Linnaeus himself made a mistake of classifying male and female mallard into separate species. With few exceptions, in most birds, males are more flashy and females are drab. Coloration can be generated through two different mechanisms, pigment and structural coloration. One of the most common pigments are carotenoids generating yellow, orange and red hues. Birds are not capable of synthesizing carotenoid de novo, so they must be acquired from the diet. Carotenoids can migrate freely through the bird body, but in the end they are deposited in the feathers. The abundance of the carotenoids is a limiting factor, and therefore carotenoid coloration is considered to be an honest signal of individual quality. Carotenoids have been implicated in many biologically important processes, such as antioxidation and immune response. One primary reason why molecular insights into genetic basis of sexual dichromatism in birds are lacking is because heritable differences for this trait are largely fixed between taxa. So some species exhibit dichromatism, whether other species don't, complicating attempts to link genotype and phenotype. Here, we took advantage of a unique system provided by mosaic canary breed of domesticated canaries. The curiosity and passion of canary breeders led to generation of mosaic factor canaries. They were created by an interspecific cross between common canaries, which are sexually monochromatic, and red siskin, which exhibits striking differences in plumage coloration between male and female. Through back crosses of hybrids with common canaries, most of the genome with siskin origin was removed, except for a region responsible for regulating sexual dichromatism. Mosaic canaries are truly unique model to study dichromatism in finches. To uncover genetic basis of sexual dichromatism, we performed the whole genome sequencing of different canary breeds and compared mosaic factor canaries versus non-mosaic breeds. By looking across the genome at genetic differentiation, FST, and the fraction of genome shared through introgression, FD statistics, we found a strong outlier peak that is our candidate region explaining sexual dichromatism. However, you can notice a second, weaker but significant peak in the genome scan. 
That is the region explaining the red coloration locus caused by the fact that we use birds of both colors, red and yellow. Moreover, the signal disappears once we remove the bridge displaying red coloration. Therefore, we concluded that one small introgressed region explains the chromatism. To narrow down the region of interest, we perform high resolution mapping by genotyping SNPs in the region of interest that were fixed between common canary and siskin. In the graph, you can see dark green, that is homozygote siskin, and light green, that is homozygote canary. All non-mosaic birds are homozygotes for canary alleys, whereas all siskin birds are homozygote for siskin alley. In the mosaic birds, you can see 36 kb block that all the mosaic individuals are homozygote siskin, and that is the block introgressed from siskin. There are three genes inside this block, PTS, BCO2, and TEX12. To check if there was no structural rearrangement introduced from siskin, we used nanopore long read uh, reads to sequence this region in uh, red siskin, but we found perfect synteny with canary. Since BCO2, beta carotenoid oxygenase 2, is a gene that has been implicated in carotenoid coloration before, we concluded that BCO2 is a strong candidate gene for explaining sexual dichromatism. To further explore, how BCO2 controls sexual dichromatism in mosaic canaries, we follow up our genomic scan with functional assays. First, we measure the difference in gene expression in regenerating feather follicles in back of bird, characterized by difference in pigmentation in males and females. We perform qual quantitative polymerase chain reaction, qPCR, and it turned out that from all three genes from our candidate region, PTS, BCO2, and TEX12, only BCO2 had significant difference in expression between male and female. You can see that female has more BCO2 expression than male. Since we didn't find any promising candidate coding mutation, we hypothesized that cis regulatory differences are responsible for regulation differences in expression. We sampled a mosaic factor carrier, so a heterozygote individual carrying both canary and siskin allele, and we quantified proportion of siskin and uh, canary alleles in different skin patches. We found a strong bias towards siskin allele, suggesting cis regulatory uh, mutation. Finally, by performing in situ hybridization, we confirmed that in the pigmented follicle there was no BCO2 expression, whereas in unpigmented follicle there was a strong BCO2 expression. So we concluded that the more BCO2 expresses, uh, the more BCO2 is active, the less carotenoid deposited. Finally, to provide a broader evolutionary context for this study, we did tra transcriptomic analysis of three wild species of finches, exhibiting different amounts of sexual dichromatism. We selected common canary, European serine, and house finch. We sampled two regions, breast and belly. As you can see here in the picture, males are more flashy. The number of differentially expressed genes correlated with the difference in the strength of pigmentation in the comparison. So in European serine, you can see many differentially expressed genes, both in breast and belly. And in case of house finch, only in breast there were many differentially expressed genes. Belly had a few. Overall, we found 
a correlation of degree of sexual dichromatism with gene expression divergence between males and females. Finally, we compare, uh, compare the gene expression between sexes, males and females, patches, belly versus breast, and sister species canary with serin, showing pronounced differences in levels of carotenoid pigmentation. Excitingly, we had 12 genes in common between tho all those comparisons, and one of them was PCO2. On the right, you can see detailed comparison of BCO2 expression patterns. First, certain females have less pigment than males and expressed more BCO2. Second, both male and female serins show lower expression of BCO2 in patches with stronger pigmentation. Finally, BCO2 expression is higher in serin females compared with canary females that have more marked pigmentation. Therefore, BCO2 is a general mechanism for acquiring sexual dichromatism, but not the only one, since we didn't see the same pattern in house finch. To conclude, in this study, I showed that dichromatism in birds can be generated by a simple molecular mechanism driven by large effect genes that exert a function on peripheral tissues. Intriguingly, carotenoid signaling might be shaped by cellular processes more than resource limitations. I would like to thank my supervisor, Miguel Carneiro, all colleagues that contributed in this study and to my scientific career development during my PhD. I would like to express my gratitude for BioDiff training and funding from FCT. My talk and thesis were much more beautiful with all pictures that were contributed by several breeders and photographers. Last but not least, I thank to SMBE Fitch organizers for providing me this amazing opportunity to showcase my work in this great symposium. If you are willing to learn more, please check my recent publication in Science.